Okay, 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 okay. So here it goes. Feyar can be extremely boring, that's true. As in the last cello technique lesson, that was a quite boring study. But not in today's lesson. Hi everyone and welcome back to another cello technique lesson. In today's lesson we're gonna cover and run through study number 25 of the great cello method by Louis Fillard, Studies of the Young Cellist. It's a wonderful study, it's full of nice shiftings, it's nice, you know, to building some phrases, it's good to work on intonation, the sound, and there are so many things you can find here in this wonderful exercise. So get ready for this one. Grab a journal where you can note some things down or take your cello and let's do this because this one is gonna be a nice one. Before we continue with this video, if you are new here, well, welcome, I'm Ila Laprev, cellist, and on this channel I produce cello technique tutorials as well, I give some tips and tricks to level up your practicing and so um, if this is what you're looking for or what you want, then consider to subscribe. Okay, now let's dive right into the exercise. Awesome, wonderful exercise. There's so much to do here. First point for the left hand, we've got some nice shiftings over here in this exercise. This exercise is actually about shiftings most of the times. So what we're gonna do right now, I'm gonna give you a couple of spoilers here. So I'm gonna give you the first three measures, an example, and then the rest you do by yourself. So you apply the tips that I'm giving and you do for the rest of the exercise. So let's go with the first measure of this exercise. So there we go, we have the first note, right? Then the second note, and then we have a shift, this one, right? So what happens, what people do often is this. So they slide with the pinky. Doesn't sound really nice, isn't it? So you need, what I like to do is that you need to slide with your first finger and then on the right timing, you hit with the pinky. Again, slower. So on the moment that you slide with the first finger, your pinky is getting ready, anticipated. So you go on to the A. So what you wanna do, you wanna break this. Okay, there we are. And what is left? To hit with the pinky. And then we have the note. So this is a way to have more accurate shifting. So now a little bit faster. So we still play these three notes, right? Now let's try to avoid that second note. So that middle note. Oh, this is nicer. 
See, so this is a great way to make very accurate and light and smooth shiftings, okay? So, and now let's try to do the whole measure here. See how accurate? Because if you do it the other way, sliding with the pinky, it happens this. Uh, see, not accurate, it sounds ugly and it just doesn't sound nice, right? Okay, now we go to the second bar. Second bar, here we have then, uh, right? But we have a shifting over here. So the same thing, so we're gonna slide with the first finger and then we hit with the right timing with the second finger. So one more time. So again, you can do that with the three notes. So in this case, we go until the F sharp. Because the G, the second finger, it's very close, right? To the F sharp just to know where we have to go, right? Now let's try to avoid that middle note. Aha, uh -huh, good. See how clean that sounds. Now let's try the whole measure. Wonderful. Okay, so I just showed you the first two bars, which is the same way of shifting. So sliding with the first thing and then you hit or either pinky, ring finger, middle finger, it doesn't matter. So now we go to the third measure and that's the last measure I'm gonna give to, to you. The rest is on your own. So what is gonna be your job here in this case for shiftings? You find where all the shiftings are and you're gonna practice only the shiftings, right? Once you practice it the way that I told you, then you try the whole measure. If the whole measure works out, then you go from one measure before and so on until you have the whole exercise in your hands. So that would be the process. Right, now let's jump to number three, so measure number three. So here we have this. Uh... So here we have already two shiftings going on. So we have one that goes back. So again, when you slide it down, don't slide like that. So don't really press on the string, no. Again, remember this one. So do that a couple of times. I know it's ridiculous, it's stupid to do that, but trust me. It's just to feel, you know, how the slidings will be. So I want that kind of feeling. So light, smooth, quickly. Now the second thing in this exercise, left hand articulation. Yeah, you got it. Left hand articulation is extremely important in cello playing. Why is that? Well, because if you don't have a good articulation, so strong fingers and hammering fingers, then your intonation is going to be so out of tune because you don't have accuracy. And accuracy you only have when you are having articulation with your fingers. So let me show you an example of articulated fingers and another example without articulation. Well, the thing is, you see, so the second time that I played, I didn't use any articulation at all. So actually, in other words, no articulation means jelly fingers. So you heard clearly the difference, okay? Now, the last thing that I want to mention here for the left hand in this exercise is left hand anticipation. So I just spoke it a little bit before, right? But now we're going to dive more deep into it. So what do I mean with the left hand anticipation? Your left hand always needs to prepare for the next note. This is very important. So I'm going to show you an example where uh, you have a good left hand anticipation and when you're not anticipating your left hand. So let's go with the first example.
Well, of course, I'm exaggerating. When I'm showing the examples, don't get scared. I mean, nobody's playing like that. It's just I exaggerate so that you really can hear the difference. But okay, I just played the two examples. Maybe some of you have noticed what was different. For those that didn't see any difference, well, let me show you very slowly what do I mean with left hand anticipation. So there we go with the first measure again. So what do I mean with left hand anticipation? We think about what's the next note, which is this. But we need to prepare our finger a tiny little bit in advance before we play it with our bow. So. Now we're moving. So first finger is on position. And now the pinky, this one, is ready to hit the next note. So one more time. Ready. In position. In position to do the shifting. Second finger ready to jump. See the difference? So say you always need to think what is gonna happen next. This is crucial because if you don't have a left hand anticipation then everything will go wrong and intonation will go wrong and the coordination between the left and the right hand or coordination or synchronization, I don't know how you call it. But anyway, you get my point. It just will not work. So left hand anticipation is very important. So I just have showed you the first two bars. Now it's up to you, it's your homework, to find the rest and the whole exercise. You're probably wondering, well, we're working on the left hand, so we're doing about some technical things, shiftings and so on, but why I'm not talking about vibrato? Well, it's easy. Vibrato, you cannot learn from a 20 minute YouTube video, you know? Vibrato is something that needs time and is very personal, but in the near future, I'll make a video about vibrato where I'm gonna share some thoughts about it and I'll share a couple of tips. Right, cool. So that was about the left hand. Now we're gonna go to the right hand. So there are many cool things happening here also on the right hand. Not very cool, but also extremely important if you want to take your sound and quality to the next level. So let's dive right into it and let me give you a couple of tips here on what you need to pay attention. So before we're even going to play this exercise, we need to check in the score what is written because this is important. You need to analyze, first of all, when you need to pay attention. So we have written here as the tempo Andantino. Andantino, if you don't know what it means, go to Google, search it, and you're gonna find it. But Andantino means, you know, a walking tempo. So not too fast, easy going. So more or less the tempo that I was playing in the example. Next thing, very, very, very important. We have a letter written under the first note, a letter G. G, for the ones that know me already, you guys know what it means. For the new ones here, for the newcomers, well, G means ganzer Bogen. Ganzer Bogen is German, and this is for the whole length of the bow in English. So for this exercise, you're gonna use, you know, plants of bow. So really, this is important because if you are limited, if you don't use too much bow, it sounds a little bit blocked. So it's important, you know, to use your whole length of the bow in order to find this deep, round, beautiful sound. So let's see how the exercise will sound when we're gonna use the whole length of the bow and when not. Let's go. So see, it sounds a little bit blocked. It doesn't sound really nice. So that's the point of this exercise. Use the whole length of the bow in order to improve a deep, round, beautiful sound on the cello. So I suggest even, you know, to play open strings first. So one, two, three, four. And make the string sing. Help. Make sure that the floor is vibrating when you're playing the lower string. So really dig into it. This is important because like this, you're opening your cello also. When you are playing the right way, your cello, it doesn't matter if it's a 
garbage cello or I don't know, 100 bucks um, cello, you can make it sound better than it is, you know? So this is important. Try to find a way to get this deep sound. I know it's open string, but make that note. Give it some sense in it. Give it some life in it, would you? Good. Another point here is very important. Bow connection. This is also very important. So make sure that there is no gap. So that's why, again, open strings are excellent for that. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. See this? I mean, to do perfect ones are really like tricky, but like try to make it, you know, as glued as possible. Let's say it like this. So let's do. Okay, I'm saying like you need to have a better bow connection, but do I have a tip or a trick that can make that easier? Yes and no. No, let's start with the bad news. No, because it is difficult. I have difficulty myself and I imagine many professional cellists, you know, they're gonna like struggle sometimes, you know, to have that perfect bow connection. But yes, I do have a trick and actually a very good one, a crucial one. My trick here, so let's check the first bar here. So we have this, right? So we have, this is an annoying one because we have a bow connection and we have a shift in the meantime. So what do I like to do always? I like to speak out the last note before we're doing the bow connection. Because like this, you're like taking a little bit more of time in order to connect. Because if you rush, check it out. This happens if you're gonna play in tempo and not putting some sense, some life into the notes. So like that. <laughs> Okay, I'm exaggerating, of course, but you clearly could hear a gap, right, between... Because I didn't speak that last note, I just played a dead note. See, it's ba bum makes no sense. What about if I sing it a little bit more? It's better. Wow, this really is better, so... So see how this sounds nicer. So what I want you to do here in this exercise, so every time observe, when you have a bow connection, play maybe the last note and try to sing it, make it expressive, and then try connect to the next one. Do that for the whole exercise. This is gonna be your homework again. And then you're gonna see how this will level up, how your bow connection is gonna be better. And it's just very simple, make the note alive. Make it sing, make it expressive. Expressive? No. Espre expressivo. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So this is very important in here that you sing, be expressivo on every note and your bow connection is gonna be better in no time. Haha, <laughs> and now the last thing that I wanna mention here for the right hand and probably one of the most essential and crucial things of cello playing is, I'm gonna give you three seconds. One, two, three. Bow distribution. Bow distribution is extremely important. Well, again, let me show you an example with a good bow distribution and another example with a more or less bow distribution. Here, in this case, I'm gonna go to the fourth line. So the first measure of the fourth line. This is a great example to show you. So I'm gonna start with a better or with a good bow distribution. <laughs> with a very bad bow distribution. I guess you heard the difference here. So what is important here in this bow distribution? So you need to calculate very well. You need to make sure that all the notes are equally spread. And also what you wanna do here in this, well, in this place that I just played, we have six notes, right? Six notes, it's quite some. So don't start to use immediately the whole length of the bow. So don't do this. Oops. 
loops and then we still have the other half to go more three notes but look how much we used for the first three notes until here that's not normal and then we have this left and of course we start to press and then we get this sound so that's why open strings again now in open strings let's count until six this time so if the exercise goes like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's try with the open string. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So very even. What you can do, if this is too hard for you, you can split it first. So let's split it by three and three. So one, two, three, stop. And you control on the mirror or whatever, if you're recording yourself on video, check where you stop. If you stop more or less at the middle, then you're right. If you stopped around here, mm -mm. and if you stopped over here, no, no way. You need to stop near the middle. So one more time. One, two, three, stop. Where am I? In the middle. So I have a lot of space to do the rest. Four, five, six, stop. And then you do the way back. One, two, three, stop. Four, five, six, stop. Okay, you think you understood, then you can try to do the whole thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect, wonderful, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, gorgeous. So like this, you practice on open strings, then you try this passage. So you can do the same, so with a stop. One, two, three, stop. Okay, middle of the bow. Now the rest. Okay, now we go back. Okay, I think I managed somehow, so let me try to play the whole thing. Wonderful, and then you continue for the rest, okay? So don't get tricked when uh, the, the faster the notes go here in the left hand, the slower it goes here in the right hand because our tendency is that when we play fast here, then automatically our arms synchronizes together with the left hand. So it's completely opposite, okay? So these are my practice tips, like on how to practice on this exercise. So I don't want to practice this with you, you know, measure per measure. So I just gave you a couple of pushes here, the rest is on you. The one who is making it, everything, is not the teacher. The teacher is giving you tips and hints and is orientating you. But the one who has to do the hard work is you and the one who is going to give results is you. That's it for today's cello lesson. I hope you found my practice tips useful and that you will apply them to your studies or to your practice time. In a couple of days, we're going to see each other with study number 26 by Feyar, which is a great study for the rhythm. So. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then in the next lesson. Bye.